Are we live? Of course we're live. People deluded. I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. As usual, it's UK. It's UK timing I'm operating on. So yeah, good morning. If like myself, you're over here in the United Kingdom, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. Appreciative to you lot that's tuned in. First things first, hope everyone had a great week last week. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Hopefully everyone's had a good Monday. You know, thanks to you lot. I love Mondays now. You lot give me a reason to love life again but you know I, and obviously as much as you can love monday obviously let's start off today well let's have a good week as usual i hope you and i we have a good week in terms of moving that much closer to our goals hopes dreams ambitions aspirations all of that good stuff make sure you're hitting the like button you're subscribing as well as on youtube as well as twitch appreciative to you lot on the topic of twitch make sure you're following you know 10 a.m first stream tomorrow on Twitch tomorrow later today, 4:30 on Plain FM. Obviously, we had a great, we've had a great bits and pieces on YouTube. But obviously, if you're with me on Twitch, you know we did a watch along for Atalanta Juventus last night. We've done Chelsea Palmeiras. We did uh, Manchester City Southampton. Um, this morning, we obviously reviewed the Premier League. We spoke about Arsenal's top four chances, and it's still up there. Make sure you're taking in the content. I don't want you lot to miss anything, people. And again, these 11.30s, will, at some point, you'll get the replays on YouTube, but they'll be on Twitch. So make sure you're there, man. Is what is Arsenal have been linked with Borgia. Let me know your opinions on him before I offer my own. We've been linked with Rafa Liao. You know, we get linked with everyone, in it. You know, Bear Strikers have been linked. Nobody's here. Nobody can help us, at least until the end of the season. Right now, we need to carry on with what we're doing. Obviously, later on in the week, I will be doing a watch along for Arsenal versus Brentford tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday. Champions League slash Europa League business. Uh, definitely one YouTube stream. PSG Real Madrid will be on YouTube. YouTube, Inter Milan, Liverpool and Napoli Barca. Twitch is your best friend for that half an hour before kickoff for all of the non-Arsenal live streams and that. So make sure you're taking it, you know, you're taking, you're taking it in people. And as usual, smash the like button if you haven't. Unexpected high bills, G, if you haven't. Trevor, whatever you said, morning, DG, finally had a good weekend as a Guna. Without us playing, you know, again, there's 16 games left. So let's see if we can have 16 more great weekends. But it's always nice to see Spurs lose. It's always nice to see United drop points. You know, technically West Ham, I ain't got no beef with them, but they dropped points. It's a decent, it's a decent week, really, and truly. But again, 16 more cup finals to go. Grant John has said, Arsenal need to sign Borgia. Big man is from my beloved Slough Town. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. That's probably why I've got a lot of time for Carl Walker Peters because he's from Haringey slash Enfield. So it's all good. K, come on, my guy. Marcel, come on, my guy. Well gone, DG. Much blessings to you. More blessings to you and everybody listening, man. Seems like nobody wants top four. Everybody's stinking up the place. Can we be surprised, though, Marcel? You've been watching football. That was the case last year, probably the year before that. It, you know, I'd say even going back to Embry's year that we finished a point off top four and got embarrassed in Europa League. It's down to everybody stinking up the place. Who can stink up the place the least, isn't it, is what it has become. You know, I would, it, that's that's how I look at it. You know, Arsenal were getting relegated. Now we're back in with a fight. Spurs the same. You know, United have gone from winning titles to being out of the Champions League race to back in again. West Ham are there. You know, Wolves have come out of nowhere. You know, the top four to top six six battle is a madness and again i'm gonna cut out the clips and i spoke about on twitch and i'm i'm really i'm tired of saying the same things but you know the narrative shift we've got to sometimes look at the numbers as much as it's great that people are dipping points we haven't moved away from united we haven't moved away from spurs the only one that can say they've moved away from the rest is chelsea game in hand i think they're six points clear of west ham now what chelsea do beyond that is down to them people but yeah, man, we've got a race for top four. I don't know where this whole rhetoric that Arsenal are the favourites for top four has come out. We're not full. We haven't been leading full. You know, we I hear it, you know, but we haven't got that target on our backs. West Ham are the favourites. You know, we don't score enough goals. We defend better than a lot of teams, but we don't score enough goals. We lack talisman. Our experienced players, we don't know what we're going to get game in, game out. So at this most decisive period, 16 games left, I don't know. Xhaka and Partey went through the motions in that game. Our young players are leading the way, but as you can see, sometimes they're going to have an off day. And in general, we're betting on no injuries, you know, no loss of form and a lot. And on top of that, you know, we've still got tough games to go. We still got to play Chelsea at the bridge. We still got to go to Spurs at White Hart Lane. You still got to welcome United to our place, you know. 
Still got to go to Newcastle away, fighting relegation. You never know what could happen, you know. Still got to play the Brightons, the Southamptons, the Wolves, you know. The, the Crystal Palace is teams that I don't know about you lot, but whenever we do, and I'm sure you could go back to August when we when we do our little review streams and look at the fixtures, I always say, all right, cool. Obviously, we look for the big game, City, all these things, Liverpool, all these things, but Southampton, Brighton, Wolves, um, Palace, these are the sort of games I look for, and I'm saying, yo, that's the bogey teams. We've got all of them. There's a lot of narratives, you know. What happens if, forgive me, Arsenal lose to Brentford? What's going to be said then? Because, again, you look at the league table. Again, Arsenal fans, I know they'll do the, but we've got games in hand. What was you lot saying the other week? I'd rather points on the board than games in hand. So, yeah, we're in a good position. We're in a fight, but you can't count them chickens before they hatch. You know, Everton as well. Again, Everton as well need revenge. And there's a bunch of other games. Every game's a difficult game, really and truly. You know, you look at you look at the league table, people, and again, tell them, tell me I'm lying. Narratives can change very quickly. This is the last time I'm going to speak about this because I feel like I've repeated myself in my last three streams and whatnot. West, how listen? If it's a race, whoever, how can Arsenal be the favourites if we're not in the pole position? If it's a race, unless it's you saying, but we start slowly and ends up the favourite is that person. We're not that. You know, we're two points off with you know three games in hand on them. Of course, it's a favourable decision, but you need to go out there and get the points. You know, you need to go out there and get the points. It's as simple as that. Realise the points. We're in a good run of form, as much as I can say that, because the facts are, it's our first win in 2022. We won against Wolves and we won a tough game, 10 men and stuff, but we weren't amazing. You know, really, we were better against City and we lost and we were poor against Wolves when you remove emotion watching it again and we won. So that's the beauty of the Premier League. We're sixth, which, again... I wouldn't be happy because I want fourth, of course, and it is what it is. But I think if the table ended like that, I think our, I don't think the players will. I don't think Arteta would want to. I think the club would take that. You know, we're in the top six, a point behind United. Obviously, West Ham be doing their thing. But as much as we talk about Wolves and United dropping points this week, Spurs are on 36 points. We played the same amount of games in them. We're, they're chasing, tra uh, trailing us with three games. I expect City to beat them. Smash the like button. I expect City to beat them. Out to God they get smashed. But if they get a result against City, what's being said, things are flipped on its head. If they beat City and we lose to Brentford and Wolves do a thing, we got Wolves after the, Bre the Brentford game. United win their next game after pissing about. Psh who's the favourite next week? It's going to, a week, a day, an hour is a long time in football. So it's going to keep changing, you know. One win this year, more red cards than goals. And I'm not saying we, we can't be talked about as favourites, but I don't get this rhetoric that has suddenly, for me in the last 72 hours, become Arsenal being the favourites. Do we have a chance? Are we there? Yes, but come on now. The leaders are, are, are them and there, really. You know, there's a lot of football to be played. You look at it there. As much as we waffle about Spurs losing, bro, they're three points behind us. We're two points clear of Wolves. We're a point in front of United. Well, behind United, apologies. They've got three draws in two games. Unfortunately, if we got something out, if we just beat Burnley, if we just got something out of Burnley, uh, uh, Burnley at home, Everton away, got at least a draw at Old Trafford, Crystal Palace not dropping dumb points, Brighton, if we were just in the game from the start, you know, where would we be? You know, again, I can't include City, but City, we were winning. We dropped points from winning positions. If we just got over the line, where would we be? But if Bucks and that, we can only deal with the facts we've got 39 points, which they said we're getting relegated. One more point. I think we're safe in the league, in it. So there's a lot of football. Arsenal definitely have a chance, but we need to look at what's going on against us. If everyone starts playing well, we have, you know, if Kane finds his shooting boots, then man at United find their shooting boots, we're going to be lacking in terms of goals. I'm not trying to water down our thing. It's the reality. We've got 16 games left. We've got, between our two first choice strikers at this moment in time, three goals in the league, tied with Gabriel. Gabriel takes more shots. We're relying on our young Gs to be the talisman. Our experienced players, respectfully, I can't put my, 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 my life savings that certain men are going to do things for 16 games, you know? Obviously, people have bad games, but you look at Arsenal's 25-man squad. Who could you say you rely on for the next 16 games? Rely on? And when I mean like, well, someone's got a gun to your head, you're dying if they, if they don't. I would bet my money on Ramsdale. I'd bet my money on Tierney. Tomiyasu can't wait till he's back. Hit the like button. I'd bet my money on Tomiyasu. I bet my money on Saka, Smith Rowe, Martinelli, with the exception of these guys being young tugs. I've got love for Laka. Smith Rowe, if I haven't said that. I've got love for Lacazette. I like Pepe. I love Partey. You know, I think Xhaka at times is... You you already know what it is with Xhaka, innit? But I can't say the same for these, man. One minute they're a hero, they're not. Cedric had a good game when he was deployed for Tomiyasu, you know? But how many... For, every, for that good game, 
We saw Sunderland. We saw nonsense. Holding came off the bench when we're down to 10 men and did quite well. But against City, there was an issue there. You know, it's, it's, it's too easy for that goal we've conceded him and Ben White, you know. And we've got young players who are going to keep making mistakes because this is where they're at. You know, other play, other teams, Spurs are doing poor, but they've got experience, a more experienced manager and a more experienced 25-man squad. You'd definitely say the case with United. I'd say Wolves and I'd say West Ham. I'm not trying to belittle our thing. I'm looking at what do we have against other people and we ain't got a talisman like that. We ain't got someone that might just scumbag goals and just, you saw what Giroud did that year. You know, he wasn't getting an opportunity. Chelsea were kind of messing about and the goals he did. We haven't really got that. We ain't got a talisman. We ain't got we ain't got some I, oh yeah, add Odegaard to people I'd bet on as well. But we haven't got a lot. So we're in with a chance. We're in with a chance. If we didn't drop down points, we'd be third. Exactly. You know, we did, but the ifs thing, as you know, Sancho, big up yourself. We can't go with that, Sancho. Like ifs reality is we drop them points. That's it. I'm sure United would say, boy, if we didn't do this against Southampton and that against Burnley, Spurs might say, obviously Spurs, Southampton away and Leicester, when, when they won, they were fortunate. But I'm sure they would go among their season. I'm sure West Ham might as well, because I'm swear there's been a couple upsets being pulled against West Ham. and that. Where would they be? West Ham might even say, bro, they lost three games. West Ham's four has been a bit rubbed. They might say they pick up something from the two L's in the draw. Boy, they... Could be, you know, they could have made serious if they could have made serious ground on Chelsea. You know, who did they actually lose to? Leeds, that's a very winnable game. I'll be I'll be vexed. Because again, if they got that three points, United it is what it is. They lost it at the death, in it. It is what it is. But if they got something out of them two games where they next to Chelsea, I'm sure unless you're City who I'm sure they're vexed about the draw. Who did they draw against? Draw against Southampton. It's crazy. Even Southampton now, Southampton, I'm reaching their 10 points off. 16 games, 10 points. It's not impossible. Hit the like button if you haven't. So, boy, and on top of that, we've got a naive squad. How many men have been, realistically, how many men have been in this situation before in high-pressure circumstances at Arsenal? Half the, for the young tugs and the people that have been here, the season's written off already nine times out of ten. So now it's when it's arguably not about football, it's about the mental and the young players, I hope in a nice way, they're ignorant from this. They're kind of blasé around it. You know, that's something we liked about them. For the experienced players, I don't know. I look at Ramsdale, I believe in you because obviously your team's gone relegated. But at this time, when you're in, it's a, it must be a nervy training ground and time to stand up to be counted when you're in an environment like he was at Sheffield United. How many other guys have been through that? And obviously we're playing once a week couple of these, well, United are definitely still in Europe. I don't know for where, I actually don't remember for West Ham, but United are still in Europe. There is a couple of it, quote-unquote, advantages and things you could say are favourable. Brazy one. And, you know, it is nice, you know, even as much as we talk about United, we've got more losses than them. They've got more draws. So, arguably, there's a debate to be said, what's better at times, to lose or to draw? You know, it all depends. You know, our goal difference is plus nine, fair play. You look at West Ham's, there's all different advantages and disadvantages other men have, man. Nobody's pulling away from each other. As much as we waffle about how great this weekend has been, and that nobody's pulled away from anyone, it's still behind United, and United are shooting themselves in the foot again. Look, three silly draws, really. You know, three very silly draws, very silly draws. Again, we've got our first first win of the camp of the calendar year now. But again, silly. Well, City's not a silly point to drop, but we got shagged in it. But it is what it is. I'm sure every team could Spurs, bro. Three silly, silly. You know, Chelsea battered them. I don't know what they they were tweaking for the Southampton Wolves games. I can't. They were tweaking, and I love you love to see it. But I don't. Where's seriously? Where's this rhetoric come that Arsenal are the are the, are the favourites for top four? Them and that you're le you're letting them, you're letting the media gas you, Jamie Carragher, and that, and then the, the, you know what's going to happen. We're not favourites. We're in a shout. We're not favourites. If anything, for me, West Ham are because they've been doing it. They are in a healthier position. When I look look at them, obviously, respectfully, Wolves have now come into this thing. But if we was looking at who is fighting for top four to six, obviously, when we say that, we probably exclude the top three teams in Chelsea, Liverpool, and City um, from bottom to top. It's probably it's not that it's only because Wolves are there, but the the, the language centres around four teams: the two United clubs in West Ham and Man United, Arsenal, and Tottenham. You've got to respect Brighton. Car Brighton man was saying they were doing bits a, a few weeks ago. Spurs are still in it. So I understand it. The, the sentiment's going to be around us. But how can we be favourites? United on, on and off the field, they're not looking like what they used to. Arsenal, the, the standards are on the floor and we don't know what we're getting game to game. Spurs are just shit. But exactly, we've got... Bro, it's, I don't even know who our games in hands are. Does it really matter? Because we just know we have tough games, you know? On top of the bogey sort of games. Bro, Chelsea, Liverpool again, boy. Liverpool, boy, we already know what sort of... Uh, 
You know, we beat Liverpool, what, a couple of years ago at the Emirates. I hope that's the case again. I hope Klopp just does a little thing for us and allows us. But, boy, Liverpool, Liverpool come like the come like the City game where you just have to write that one day off. So, games in hand is tired. Like, it's all about realised points. And as I always say, well, everybody plays 38 games, so it doesn't matter. Like, it's not that it doesn't matter, but it's, unless the league has changed, everybody plays 38 games, so... It's not really about that, man. Again, we're at the point of the season where every three points is an even bigger L, you know, for every team. Whether you're trying to stay in the league, win the league, even City trying to wrap it up, really. So it's 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 a brazy one. Don't let the media twang you lot, man. Because well, they were not saying this when we dropped points to Burnley. And that's why you can't sit there and go, oh, they're winnable games. Burnley was a very winnable game. But they set up as a they set up as a um low block and we struggled. We struggled with Wolves. What's to say Brentford are not going to come on that? Smack the like button, people. So we're in with a fight. That's about it. Like, you're, whatever narrative you, the players and the manager want to write, they'll write it. If you don't want to be in Champions League, you do everything to get there. Simple as that. You have a great position. You've never probably been in this position before, but unpopular opinion, Arsenal, for I've said this before, so, some G1's been here for a while. You can quote me. I've always said my unpopular opinion, Arsenal have not missed out on the top four nine times out of ten because teams, I'm not saying teams are not better than us, but it's like if, you know, if everyone was on the City and Liverpool thing, if there was two more clubs like that, we'd sit there and say, all right, you know what it is, it is what it is, what it is sort of thing. You know, there's nothing you could do. But in the last few years, we haven't missed out on top four because of that. We've just stunk up the place and, and done silly things, just like going back to Emre's year. So you have a good position. 61 likes, people. For 200 odd people, we're moving mad. That should be at 100 likes. You lot are doing the guy dirty. See why I prefer the Twitch people then? But yeah, man, that's that's that in relation to... That's that really. Come on, G1. Exactly. Like Ward Prowse is an overlooked player. I hear that. Don't let the media fool you. We aren't favourites. We just own a chance that we must not take for granted. Kelson, tell him again. Simple as that. DG, do you think we'll make top four? And do you think Chelsea could get dragged into a top four race as well? I don't know if we'll make top four. I I, I if I had to bet money, I'd bet on Arsenal getting top six. I wouldn't at this moment in time bet on Arsenal to get top four. As I said, there's an opportunity and things, but I don't. It's not that I'm not believing. I don't believe it in my heart. I'm looking for inspiration. Apart from the young Gs and somewhat Arteta, I don't see it. I don't see a talisman. I don't see... I look at our strikers. There's only so far working hard. The bar's on the floor when we're praising working hard anyways. But, you know, not to belittle it, but I, just, I don't know if you're going to score. You know, as much as I think we've improved defensively and statistically and with the eyes, we're one of the best defensive teams now in the league. We're still susceptible to BS. We've gone through the whole season individually not being able to bet on certain centre mids and there's not a single pivot I believe in. We've also got to remember with an average age of 23 or you have to, li mistakes are mistakes, but you have to account for Ramsdale and Tomiyasu having the rare bad game. Tierney the same, more so if they played the Lokongas, the Sackers, the Smith Rose, you know, Tavares, all of these sort of guys make, even Gabriel and Ben White making silly mistakes, which does cost you points. And at this moment in time with 16 games left, boy, we have a, ch a chance. And I mean, Chelsea, would like what they did before they went off to AFCON. I mean, the man said AFCON before some of them did before they went off to the World Club Cup. If they drop silly points, they'll draw themselves out again. Right now, with a game in hand and six points clear of West Ham, if I'm too cool, you know, world champions, all of that, you want to cement that and make ground. They can draw them. They drew themselves out earlier this season. They could draw themselves back out. You know, really, it's the business end. And who knows, man? Who knows? None of these men have been in the trenches, but it's time to be to stand up to be counted. Trust. But the thing is, you need 25 players. I'm not trying to belittle Arsenal or whatnot, but can can anyone bet? Can anyone say they bet on 20 all the 25 man squad whether they're going to play one game or every game of the 16 left to stand up to be counted? It sounds good in the Disney Channel thing, is where it is. If you got over the line, you'd be favourites. But that's like everyone, you know. It'd wanna it'd be one of them. Jungle Jesus, come on, what a name. Appreciative to you lot. We'll get into the Borgia tune. The man said Borgia tune. Borgia chat in a second. Someone said something about tune. My multitasking is poor. I cannot read and talk at the same time. Yeah, we've been linked with Rafa Leal, but we've been linked with the world, man. Whether we're going to bring them come is another thing, man. Smash the like button. We're still only at 87 likes, man. Come on. Big up from Canada, DG. It's minus 27 here. And every time I hear fans say that top four is locked up, uh, my blood's boil. At least they are good for that. <laughs> right, fair enough, but everyone's fighting for something. 
DG, not going to lie, I hate seeing Arsenal being called the favourites for top four trust. And a bit of football manager in me wants us to, you know, people just to not play us because you've got a target on your back, you know. you got a target on your back. No one, you know, one thing that could help Wolves, no one's really rating Wolves. And I've, I said it before we played them, no one's giving them and their, their credit for pulling back their season and what they're doing now because they're in your face and maybe because they started problems with us and they seem a bit insecure with their celebrations at White Hart Lane. You know, we can show you how to do this thing properly there. We won the league there. Now people are giving them their credit, but I would want to do the Wolves thing. If no, the, the beautiful thing about being underrated, no one sees you coming, you know? I don't want us to be favourites. Not that I think we are. I don't want us to be favourites. You've got a target on your back. Can these men cope with pressure? There's been very few times this season where, and that's what I liked about Wolves in hindsight, and there's been a couple of times where we've known what other teams are doing and, and we are playing after them and we've had to, to go in and do this thing. Or before, we know how to set the tempo. But there's also been times we've buckled that. So let's see, man. I hope we get top four. You need to, as much as I'm, we've been waffling about top four, but if there's no top six, I genuinely think there should be no talk about new deals. For the, for Saka, yeah, not about gaffers. Because that's the minimum. Regardless of what man are building, you know, building blocks, what players are saying, the future, the relationship with the owners and whatnot. If you do not get top six minimum, consider we finish back to back eighth. Wolves have scored 21 league goals in 20 something league games. Surely that's not sustainable for another 50. But Wolves and Wolves and us struggle to score goals. Lo and behold, there was one goal between us, one goal that they handed to us. You know, as much as I was getting scared when we was doing the watch along, a part of me thinking, these men can't score. And they're just crossing and crossing, saying that within 20 minutes, they popped them North London, man. And people are going to want smoky settings, but Wolves are coming for blood against us. So we're going to need to stand up, man. <laughs> Minus 27, that's mad. I'm getting pissed with the cold here in Edmonton, but that's the next thing. Trust me, it's cold out here in Eddie, but wait, when am I saying minus seven? We're one or two injuries away from being a mess. Going to need Lady Luck to get top four, top show as always dg charlie i appreciate you and this is the thing man we don't want to be them guys but obviously if, if the worst thing could be if jack or Partey get injured because that's the midfield fucked i know and then they look you know respectfully lakonga looks like he needs you know he needs a shoulder to cry on them and there i'm sure he will get good but this isn't the time of the season for that we got to be cruel to be kind you want to cry cry at london coley you can't ball on the pit, fit pitch because we need that you're right and the thing is for me we haven't got you know, the first thing was finding a certified 11. The next thing was finding a certified squad. You know, when we, when a couple men start getting injured, you see it. Like, respectfully, it kills me to say it because I think, you know, we make meaty players in a position of importance. You lose Xhaka, you're going to kill the midfield. You lose Partey, you're going to kill the midfield. You know, you lose Tomiyasu, we don't know because Cedric got ripped against Sunderland and he did his thing against Wolves. You know, maybe he fancied himself staying at Wolves. You know, Portuguese man are here. I could set up shop. I don't know. I don't know, man. A lot of these guys, I don't know what we're getting game from game to game. I don't know what I'm getting across 10 minutes. Like I said, Xhaka and Partey against Wolves had better 10-minute spells than others. I don't know what these guys are on. And as much as Arteta and Edu speak about the experienced players as being the ones, as they said with Xhaka and Partey, much like United, another top four race, uh, top four rival, sorry, when you go across all your experienced players, United is a bit different because it's like there's off-field rumours and stuff going on and just poor form. You go through Arsenal's team and, you know, you look at the experienced players. There's very few experienced players that wouldn't have an asterisk against their name. Partey, inconsistencies, injuries. Xhaka, we know what it is with Xhaka. Lacazette goals, you know. Aubameyang when he was here, obviously, you know. And any other experienced players. Cedric, are you levels when come, when called upon? Historically, Kalajinac and Marie, who have departed in January, Marie on a, on a long basis. When relied upon, you lot have had good games. Can you be 30? The answer is probably no. Bring it on. I like living rent-free in Wolves' head. I don't know why a couple teams are trying to be for us, but I, I don't mind it. You know, it makes things interesting. I don't know why Wolves trying to force a problem with us, man. Wolves are moving under the radar. Teams fighting for top four should be wary. You're mad. You're, you're right, DG. You're preaching this morning. I'm not trying to. It's just I don't like to lie to you, lot. I'm not going to sit here and gas the thing. Like, I'm not saying we're not in a fight for top four, but this favourite shit, come on now, man. Come on now, favourites. Favourites. We don't know if we're going to score across two games. Can you say your favourites? Come on now. Respectfully. 
DG, come to think of it, if we had just one striker, just one with potential, even so, I would have been a little excited for this opportunity. For me, if we brought in a striker or a centre mid, just something to gas it and galvanise and give us a push, I'd be a lot more optimistic than top four. Obviously, with I'm not going to say I'm more optimistic than I was last season or at any points this season, because obviously, you know, mathematically, we've pulled the season back of sorts. But there'll be a time for me to genuinely say, all right, top four is ours. I, I can't. I can't say that. Like, I can't. There's, there's bare things I can't say of Arsenal. If you get over the Brighton game at home, if you show me something away at Selhurst Park, St Mary's, you know, if you do me, if you do a thing in the next game against Wolves, if you pattern Brentford, if you show me something, I'm not asking you to win them all, but if you show me something at Stamford Bridge, at White Hart Lane, you know, I know it's not called that anymore, but it's never going to change from that. Show me something at the Emirates because we, we're against United because you know it's us versus De Gea. Let's see what's going on. And you look at United, I know things are looking bad, but all it takes is, you know, Pogba looking good since he's come back. Sancho's finding his feet. All it needs is a little Ronaldo scoring goals. And then United are back to what they were doing last in, in, early in the season. You know, just winning. The games might not have been pretty, but they're just patterning wins. You know, Oli, when Oli finished second, I won't say it's a false position because they earned that, but it was a false position sort of, you know, really. So you've got to be wary that a team that can just put a little bit of form together can nice themselves. Look at Chelsea with Giroud when Lampard didn't really want to use him. He ended up kind of saving their season, per se. If you could put a little run together, you could do stuff. But everyone's got a dodgy round of fixtures now, really. If I'm honest with you, everyone's got some beauty games to play. But boy, man, it's time to stand up to be kind. But enough of that for real now, man. That's 27 minutes and 10 seconds, man. Appreciate you lot tuned in, people. Big up, DG, for once in 2022. Arsenal didn't ruin my weekend. It's because we didn't play. Aye, right, man. You know, we said we missed Arsenal. Maybe he was moving too so too soon. Bar and CS, appreciate you. Trevor, I know I said that already. Right, you're moving mad, Luan. Moving like that that Palmeiras defender by the same name, you know, can getting sent off and conceding the pen. People were saying Leicester for the title last season, then bottled her up. Agree, RE United. Ronaldo missed a sitter with that under hit finish. They could well go on a run. Everyone in that top eight could take top four. Boy. DJ, I don't honestly think Arsenal for now own a player that is truly consistent. Bit harsh. I think the younger players, I think Ramsdale, I think Ben White to a certain degree, I think Gabriel. But again, these lot of young players, there's booky things that could happen. If we got top four, do you think Odegaard would have a cheeky word with Haaland? I think Haaland's having a cheeky word with Odegaard all the time, but it's a myth, man. <laughs> Come off it. Probably more chance of getting killing Mbappe for free, really, because he's copying on re-celebrations. But yeah, man. Let's see what Haaland's looking like at 32 once he's done doing everything. Chelsea aren't playing great, but they are still far more consistent than us. And at this moment in time, what else matters, really? Getting over the line. Hit the like button. We've done well, you know. We've got out the December period, not necessarily with wins, but still in amongst that. It's not enough. Do you rate Salazar? He's all right, man. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Nothing special. Keep your opinions and whatnot coming, people. Again, let's get into this Borgia stuff, man, because I just see, you know, we ain't been speaking about it. It's just been around top four. Now, for me with Borgia, before I get into the report, because I see low profile say, does Borgia have the DG stamp from the little I've seen getting more rat vibes with a bit more tech? There's many ways to look at it. The first thing I look at for Borgia, I like him. You know, he's got that Albanian spirit. He, he, he fights for everything. You've seen it in the, for me against Spurs and United. There were elements you could see his end product could be a lot better, but I like him. You know, he's a party, he's strong for a 20 year old. He makes good runs. You know, he, 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 he's tried to lay on a couple of decent assists. He's obviously only 20. You know, he's got a lot to like about him. And definitely when I look at some of our 20-year-olds, like what well, Eddie's around them ages, I'd rather Borgia. He can play with his back to goal and he can link play and he's doing good things for Southampton. Where I think it's a myth, Chelsea don't sell us good players, bro. Chelsea will give us their pensioners and their shit man and their double agents. They're not going to give us someone that's in his 20s. And obviously, that's going to cost 40, 50 million. You know, when you listen to the way Thomas Tuchel speaks about him, it's not that he's be begrudging his development over there and he's done his thing at Vitesse Pria, prior. He's got 60, he's got six goals in the league. Now, if we're paying 40, 50 million for six league goals, have we learned from Lacazette and Eddie and Getia? We're going to cost, his, and it's a, it's a project player, which is cool, but you're going to have to spend 40, 50 million on that. 
you know how let's just say you're getting Isaac and all these guys that's more than that so that's a hundred odd million that's before you talk about centre mid that's before maybe a backup right back or any other op areas that Arteta wants to to to, to fix that's a, without assuming where we're going to finish whether that's no Europe Europa League or Champions League and that's obviously without talking about any other positions that Mikel Arteta may or may not want to improve so I don't somewhat buy this you know he is a good project player we were linked with Tammy as well. Um, and for him as well, if I was Borgia, I've just signed a four or five year deal at Chelsea. I would be keen to see because if I was him, we spoke about this already. I would kind of, um, I was kind of eyeing up. Um, if I was him, I'd be eyeing up a squad row initially at Chelsea. There's not too many. Who else? Look, Arky's having his frustrations, but what other out and out strikers are involved in that squad next season? You might be able to find a little role for yourself at Chelsea, especially with the Lukaku things going on. There could be a role for you at Chelsea, which I'm sure was the goal for them initially. I personally think Chelsea are going to buy a striker in Jan. I don't, I mean, in the summer, don't know what's happening with Lukaku, but that's the first thing. Also, Southampton, you know, because let's just say Arsenal in this dream world, we bought Borgia, and for me, again, He's got potential, but it's very dangerous if you're betting on someone that's got six league goals to their name. He's still developing. He's still learning. It's not his fault. He's doing well in it, but this is the stage he's at. You know, let's just say, cool, we did that. And then we had the best of both worlds. He comes, you sign another striker. If I'm Borgia, that's great, but I'm playing at Southampton. That would be the one thing that make me necessarily not want to go to Chelsea or sign for Arsenal. You know, I'm at the stage where I'm 20. I'm playing week in, week out in the Premier League. Southampton, I think in the last few years, have a net spend of about 25 million quid. That tells you that they're not going to spend too much. So you'll get opportunities. Chelsea, they might give you four or five games. If you're not doing the job, you know how the thing's set, man, after win leagues and things. So... I might even want to stay at Southampton. You know, you could stay at Southampton for a couple of years, 18 months, two years. Chelsea might say, you know what, you're ready to come back. Other Premier League teams or European teams might take a look at you as well. I'm not going to be, let's not be disrespectful to Southampton. There's clearly expectation, but the expectation from leading the line there and the standards compared to doing it for Chelsea, which... Well, to be fair, Jogba had five league goals. They've had Shevchenko. They've had a bag of crap, crap strikers or strikers they bought and turned rubbish. I had two Chelsea. You lot are world champions. I'm a bit sour. But um, they might say, come come back and have an opportunity. And the thing is, Chelsea, the standards are completely different at Southampton. Chelsea, if you miss one, Lukaku, even when he was scoring, there was problems. Southampton and Arsenal, you know, Arsenal, the bar's on the floor. You just have to work hard up front, like you're seeing with certain men leading the line. But the pressure... Right now, as much as you can say no pressure in the Premier League, doing this thing at Southampton, there's not too much expectation. You're doing your thing. You know, you've only been in the Premier League for six months, really and truly. So I don't I, I don't know what to buy. You know, I do I, I do think Arsenal like the look of him. You know, he looks like the profile we're looking for, link up play, can do other things than just scoring goals, got time on his hand and things like that. But I can't see it. Chelsea are always in strong negotiating positions. Well, not for their centre backs right now, but he signed a new five-year deal. He's 20. You know, we heard earlier that his family, you know, a few months ago, before this rumour was a thing, you heard, um, you heard Fingy, man. You heard that you, you heard his family wanted him to stay at Southampton. Man, like Bergerai. Hey, it's Valentine's Day, man. I know your baby mama likes the Bergerai lookalikes. I'm doing two for one deals, man. I'm man. Shout, man. But yeah, on a serious note, Again, he's an asset for Chelsea as well. Again, Chelsea do a good job. Whether him or Colin Gallagher are going to make it at Chelsea is, is another thing. But they're assets. People are starting to rate them in the league. Borges is getting linked. You know, there's, these guys, could you hold on to them? They could, we're talking about 40-50. That could be 45-55. We don't know. So I don't buy the Borgia links. For what it's worth, I don't buy it, people. But it's not what I buy. I do think Arsenal have interest, but it just doesn't seem feasible. And I would look at Arsenal because he's a project player. He's going to have to need his own scope to develop. He's obviously better than Enketia and that, but at 20 years of age, he's at that stage where he's trying to make a name for himself. You know, six, seven goals in 24 games um, so far. I think he's got six in the league. He did stress out Harry Maguire. He probably should have been sent out. And I like him. It's nothing to do with him. You know, he's got seven goals. He's doing well, doing their thing. Mikel Arteta is weighing up a summer raid on London rivals Chelsea for Armando Borgia. He was going from strength to strength on loan at Southampton. He's been loaned out. And you know what? He might, If I was him, I wouldn't, might even want to stay again, people. For him, he could obviously join a squad that's doing the youngster thing, London, all of that sort of stuff. According to Football.London, Arteta and Arsenal have taken notice of the Albanian's South, uh, Albanian international South Coast displays and Spanish coach regards the, regards the forward highly. I mean, you can regard him as high as you want. Is, is it feasible? If not, we need to move on. The publication says that for Arteta, bolstering his attacking options will be a priority in the summer and for a move 
and a move for Borja is being considered. I mean, we did a Juventus watch along. I mean, Vlahovic, you know, the general play, one of a left foot, scored an equaliser against Atalanta. It would have been nice, but it isn't a thing. So you're going to have to look elsewhere. But you're still going to have the same old problems, you know, really. He hasn't shown he's a 20-league goal man, and that's the territory Arsenal need to be looking at. Um, more goals than Lacazette. Again, the bar's on the floor. But yeah, he's been linked with us. No feasibility other than we like him. It doesn't surprise me. He's playing in the Premier League profile. Probably are looking at him. Like, everybody's looking at him, you know. Um, there's probably a couple of Premier League clubs that probably tried to buy him from Chelsea permanently or probably clubs that will, if not Southampton, say, give us him on loan. We don't know what's going to happen there. From one striker to another, Arsenal interested in Rafael Leal transfer with 22-year-old AC Milan forward also wanted by Newcastle. Very frustrating. Can score goals, can link up play, but sometimes the passing and the concentration isn't quite there. Very frustrating. Talented striker, but very frustrating. Arsenal are interested in signing AC Milan forward Rafael Leal. They face competition from Newcastle for his signature. I mean, this Spanish publication is always making mad links. I don't know, but allegedly Arsenal hope to secure a deal to land Leal when the transfer window reopens in the summer. As you know, he can operate just off the left or as a striker. He's got 10 goals and six assists and 27 appearances in all comps. Um, he scored at the weekend against Sandoria. People, AC Milan are top of the table. He's contracted until 2024. So similar to us with Sacramento. Martinelli, they probably have to make a decision on 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 Rafa Leal very soon. People, Manchester City were linked with him, Wolves were linked with him, and they were told to fork out fifty million, which isn't the biggest. Um, as we know, Arsenal are in desperate need of a striker. You know, we barely got any, and all three to go with Aubameyang stand to leave for free, really. So wait, I don't know what's going on there. Again, just looking at this, apparently Douglas Louise, we, we always link with Douglas Louise. Apparently, Roma are going to compete with us for Douglas Louise, according to this publication, maybe because they can't get Xhaka. Apparently, Jose is going to splash the cash people. And we all know there's interest in Douglas Louise from Arsenal Football Club. If you don't know already, you know, Stan Kroenke's team, the Rams won the Super Bowl. Irrelevant to me because it's irrelevant to me it's like it's his success it's not mine i just care about arsenal i don't care about no sister clubs and things like that but yeah where the rumors are concerned it don't look like there's any others people again you can spin the block on art and type in arsenal once again but yeah apart from them borgia links roughly Leal, it's it's meaty let's type in arsenal again oh yeah wait i'm bugging out people obviously there was rumors about icardi as well why is it let me find this again for you people. Scrolling all the way down. I don't know why it closed it. Was read it again. You got to be on Twitch, people. Make sure you're following me on Twitch. You're, you're doing yourself a disservice, people. A big, big, big disservice, people. Well, Demari Gray, the, the, the mad tag in it. Well, when does <laughs> unlucky, 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 Demari Gray, unlucky decision making, still inconsistent off the field as it is on it, even though his purple patch was there. Arsenal turned down Icardi swap. Now, it makes sense, you know. We, it would be, you know what, it would probably make for a great segment in the Amazon doc. But Arsenal have been drama-free. It makes no sense to bring Icardi and the baggage and the stories that is Icardi. I'm sure it'd be good for the for the talk, for, for the shade burrows and Amazon docs and things like that. But Icardi is Mr. Baggage, you know. Beer baggage. Hell of things going on. Doesn't make sense. But apparently... The Athletic, got to read it to you lot. Arsenal turned down Icardi swap. Arsenal wrapped up a first piece of business for the summer transfer window last week with obviously confirming Matt, right? Matt Turner. It's understood he'll join in a three-year deal once the market restarts. That's great for us. Obviously, the main focus will turn to being a striker. We know Aubameyang has gone bar, so we know Lacazette and Enketi are keeping it moving. We know we tried for Isaac. Didn't want to elevate the re activate the release clause. Vlahovic, whether there was encouragement or not, you look like you got your pants got pulled down in the Italian media. Dominic Calvert Lewin, it seemed like we were more aggressive in the summer. And obviously, the summer times it was more Tammy Abraham and Latoura Martinez. Now, I would love Latoura Martinez, or like Joshua has said, Jonathan David. You know, I think he's really improving, but yeah, Arcadi PSG don't even want him to stay. Um, apparently. And obviously, we allegedly tried a swap deal for Morata. I can't lie, Morata had a decent game, I feel, against Atalanta yesterday, folks. 
Apparently, at one point, Arsenal were looking into a swap that would have seen Morata move the other way. Such ideas was not uncommon, and the Athletic has learned that Arsenal also had the opportunity to explore potential exchange involving Paris Saint-Germain Argentine forward Icardi. The 28-year-old joined the French side from Inter Milan on loan in 2019 before completing a permanent move um, later in that year. He's got 38 goals in 87 appearances, which isn't the worst. We know he's a decent striker, but obviously you're going to be a side man with the players they have. This might have been an interesting prospect, but as with various possibilities that came Arsenal's way, it did not develop because Arsenal were clear on the candidates they would be prepared to pursue. And if none materialised, they would stick with existing options until the end of the season. That proved to be the case and Arteta will hope his squad can finish the league campaign strongly before revisiting the recruitment situation with Edu. All right, it is what it is, man. It is, it is what it is. There you, there you have it. Let me scroll the way back. Do you think Arsenal need a versatile attacker like Leal or more back-to-back? -back? Both, really, you know. I'll take the versatility, but probably need someone that can do it all, really. Someone that can make runs off the ball. A bit like... I understand why the Borgia links are there. He can make them runs off the shoulder or he can play with his back to goal or drop deep and things like that. So, yeah, man. If, big if, we get top four, do you think Declan Rice would be a realistic Xhaka replacement? I mean, unless you got got million to start a conversation, they're not involved. There's a myth. Just want to see consistency in Arsenal. Trust. Newcastle allegedly wanted him for 40 Borgia is hot commodity at the moment, and that's a that's a you know that's a serious one. Buying Borgia as a second striker makes sense. First choice, not so much, especially for fifty million. Like Arsenal, we need goals, so it, it would be a very Arsenal thing, respectfully to Borgia, to spend fifty million on someone that might in the future develop into a twenty league goal man. But right now, he's a six goal man in the Premier League. I mean, I would love Levermento, but yeah, man, it's a myth. Probably more chance of him him, him heading back. Southampton are serious about making his loan permanent. Chelsea could do the buyback clause thing like with Tammy and leave a mentor. Why not? I wouldn't want Arsenal to spend any more than 25-30 on Borgia. Danny, man said Danny Drinkwater. Man said, you know where you're getting Borgia, you can have Ross Barkley. No, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're so good. You know, we're so good. I'd rather none than them things there. The bow's on the floor if we're getting into that. Need to get Lamptey, Basuma and Sanchez. I mean, Renato can stay where he is, if I'm honest with you. United and Spurs making it easy for us to get into European places. I hope we make it easy for ourselves. We're the only ones that need to do such. 135 likes. Keep running up the like button if you haven't done up that one already, folks. What's going on? If we could, I think you mean buy Calvin Phillips from Leeds. Would you take him? Yeah, why not? Can't get gassed on Borgia. Everyone spins Maguire, DG. Martinez spat at Theo Hernandez in the Milan derby. Yeah, that was dirty, man. Nasty and unneeded, really. Hit the like button if you haven't done such already. Man said, Bunny Cardi brings more baggage than Gyal. Icardi is master, musty. Get all the attackers. How confident are we that Arsenal will actually buy two strikers, considering they are struggling to sign one and can and they can sign two midfielders in the summer when we can't sign one? Boy, I don't know. You know, the minimum for me by Arsenal standards is two signings in the summer, a striker and a midfielder. I think you need to add that times two and a right back if you were serious and obviously a backup keeper. But the club has done one, in it, really? Done that. Borgia is surely looking at number nine spot at Chelsea. Lukaku should be worried about this. I don't think Lukaku should be worried anytime soon, but in terms of ability, more so what's going on with you. But I, as I said, Borgia should be lining up, should be eyeing it up. Even not necessarily starting, just being involved. Odegaard is consistent to people underrate his contributions when he doesn't score assists. Yeah, but it's not to that standard. Borgia and Martinelli would be absolute problems. They would, but they're young. There'll be times they're not on it. Like, I, again, it'd be probably very different if we were Southampton fans. I'm not saying Borgia's not amazing, but when you're watching someone week in, week out, you see a human element. And it, and again, it'd be, as much as I don't rate Lacazette and Nguyen, it'd be unfair on Borgia because he's got six goals in the league. Whatever he ends is whatever he ends with, but he's got six goals in the league. It's very different if we're looking at him to be the 20 league goal man. Again, you're putting, it's again putting people in boots that, they can't feel or have shown right now they're not able to feel.
And then we'll be, you know, we'll be surprised when he's going on goal droughts and things like that. Even the strikers, even the Vardys, Abamians, Canes, people that have been doing it for years go on goal droughts. He's still developing. If I was him, I'd probably stay at Chelsea slash stay at Southampton. But again, I'm not going to sit here and say if Arsenal put money on the table, I wouldn't hear what they got to say. He fits into the remit of what we're doing. You probably have more chance of being our first choice than Chelsea's first choice, just based on where both clubs want to be and what they're evidently doing. Trust me, people, if we get Osimhen, we're going to do damage. The man's a top striker. I would love Osimhen, but yeah, man, it don't seem that like that one's happening. I didn't say I don't rate Renato. I just don't think he's as good as people make out. I just don't think he's the answer, if I'm completely honest. DG, would you play Martinelli up front and bring in Smith Rowe after the Brentford game or keep Lack in the team until his misses cost us a game? To be fair to you, I think we've got the balance with Lacazette. So until something major, I think I'd continue with him really and truly. And then obviously Smith Rowe or Martinelli. But again, you know, it depends. Any messing about with Lacazette, Martinelli's the one. Muller is not like Borgia. I don't personally, I don't think that Muller you at Arsenal will make the grade through the striking ranks. I think we just have to hope he does. Again, I'm no Arsenal coach. I don't know. I just think Muller looks like one of them who we'll shot man and make peace, man. Personally, I don't know anything past that. Boy, well, see you soon. Jonathan David and Rafa Leo for me as summer signings. Ooh, can we get one? Then look to. Oh, I don't really want to buy both of them. I think we'll get five players in the summer, but only one of them will be a big name. Expect another window like the one at the start. I mean, to be fair, if they're not big, I don't care if they're big names, man. I just want them to be able to do the job, man. I hope we get under the radar names, a lot of sparky names. To be fair, we bought under the radar man that are crap. We bought big name guys that are crap. We've got household names that have done well. We've got guys that might not have been household names. So then just as long as the scouting has been done right, I know every signing presents a risk, but that's the major thing for me. And arguably when, you know, these big money guys, make sure you get it right. Because as you can see at Arsenal, arguably when we've made costly uh, acquisitions, or whether they're not necessarily transfer fees, but big commitments for free transfers. William Lacazette for 52, Xhaka for 35, 40, Pepe for a deal reaching to 72 million, Pablo Marie based on how expensive it is to the games he played. William on a free, if I didn't say that. But just to remind you, it's so bad, we have to say it twice. These are the issues. It's like as, as the, as where we've become more financially prudent or had to be, and we've been behaving more reckless. Boy, games in hand FC is dead. Game by game, FC, is it for me? We should be closing in on 200 likes. Smash the likes or unexpected high bills and subscribe road to 50k. Shout out, South London. Boy, boy. And the lamp teaching, we're not going to spend 50 million on, uh, I wouldn't say back up right back, but I would like to have two right backs that can fight for one spot, but we're not going to do that city thing. So I don't think we're spending 50 million on Basuma without talking and then have to talk about a striker or two or a midfielder. I'd rather Basuma over Renato Sanchez, personally. I don't think it's the end of the world. Lacazette holds the ball up well, but he's missing goals too much. Goals win games. I believe in Martinelli to score them up front or play both up top. I don't think it's the time to be changing the formation and things like that. Personally, you need to find the system and make sure it works. Obviously, when you lose and points are being dropped, you can flip things. Rise up the like. Shout out to all the members. Almost a perfect weekend and we didn't even play. We have to take advantage for once. Don't care about signings right now. We've got to support men who is here. Now this team is good enough for full. I don't know if this team is good enough for full, but this team has shown they're good enough to be in the conversation. So see it through to the end. For me, fourth place minimum, you need to have a 20 league goal striker. Fair enough. And the thing is with Laka, everyone's acting surprised. Laka's been doing that all season. Like, link up play might score occasionally, but gonna miss it. As Eddie, the phone's not gonna ring when it's serious business. So, as much as I criticize these players at times, it's that if you're just showing me one thing, at some point, I just have to accept you for, for what you are. Off topic, people. Apparently, Kieran Trippier has broken his metatarsal. Bloody hell. Just moved to Newcastle. 
if Tammy got sold, I wouldn't be surprised if Borja got sold. And to be fair, I could see it, you know, because reality, Chelsea are Europe Champions League champ, uh, Champions League winners. They're trying to catch City for the league. Borja with his six goals in development. I'm not saying he can't be part of the squad. I'm not saying he can, but you could see them taking 40, 50 million. And I don't know what Shaq or what they're going to do, but bringing in people that's going to help them more today sort of thing. And that's not too bad. A guy that's come from your academy, he's gone to Vitesse, scored some goals, been capped by his country in Albania, sold for 40, 50 million. Crazy. If I was Borja, I wouldn't necessarily want to be back up. Good day, DG. If we were to get Champions League qualification, how do you think the club, the squad will fare in the champs? Probably get smacked. But still. Isaac, 50. Borja, 25. Spence, 10. Telemans, 3. Nevers, 30. Thoughts? Well, you're not going to get Telemans for free unless you wait a year, which we need centre mids now. Spence is not going nowhere for 10 million. He's, he's just signed a new deal and he's, 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 you know, he's rising with every game. 25 million for Borja. Again, Chelsea, in my opinion, if they ever would, would be silly. 50 for Isaac seems about fair, but they're not going to go for that really and truly. That's... Psh. There's a myth. I mean, contracted until 2023, Nevers for 30 million is a decision to make. I think Wolves will just hold firm and probably want more towards 35, 40, really. Similar fee to what Telemans wants. Eddie is whack. Just meaty. I do think one day you'll be a relatively decent striker just right now. Just meaty. Like, just incredibly meaty. Just so, so meaty. Like just incredibly meaty. Trying to see if there's anything else going on relating to Arsenal. 165 likes. Keep hitting the like button, people. Appreciative to you lot tuned in. What else is going on? Yeah, that's it, boys. You really all bids rejected. It's tired, man. And I just hope scouts do their job, man. It's easy for us to sit here and say names, but you lot have had... I'm not being funny. You lot have known for probably two, three years you need a striker. There should be a list of them at all different levels. And then you should have been monitoring their progress. Some have had better seasons, I can guess, than others. Proactiveness, man. We should do Cedric slash Levermento. Now they got Walker Peters, but hey, Levermento, I don't know if they, they'll want to see Cedric back there. They've got two right backs better than him. Do you feel personally? Do you feel personally we can have long term success with Arteta if conditions are right? Again, I don't. I don't know about what long term is. You know, I don't know about long term. Everyone has to sing from the same hymn sheet. One man can't hold it. But I think we can definitely move into a right, a good direction. Where do you think Bubaka Camaro will end up? DG. I think United. Funny enough, but I don't know, man. He's gonna have a pick of clubs. Yeah, but there's a fine line, you know, between being deluded and being self-aware. I think this club has just inflated Eddie's ego because, come on, if we were there, come on, who wouldn't get gas? The club's begging you to stay. You're an Arsenal striker. You're involved. And you know in your heart, you know you're meaty. So I, I get it, but that's one thing that's annoyed me, man. Like, there's been better young players or better players that have not been given the opportunities to hang around the side and... Almost, it's almost like we're begging meaty players. Like respectfully to Eddie, I'm not saying we don't need a body in 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 up front, but there's argued no matter how much we need goals, it's arguable that you can't help us with that. Respectfully, you've got a bag of them in the league. I mean, the cup. We're not in no cups anymore, so it don't matter, really. But yeah, if we was in the champs, it'd probably be meaty for us. Any questions, talking points, etc. Keep them coming, people. Interesting de debates. But yeah, back to that mullet thing. Nowhere near Borgia. I'll stand down if I'm wrong, but I can't see it. I personally like Patrick Schick. I don't. Would you take Wood Prowse? I feel he gets overhyped. I mean, he would do his. He would do the. Yeah, I know everyone makes a song and dance about the free kick, but some players, you know, they're gonna drop. Just they're good for a couple. I'm not saying Wood Prowse just plays like that, but he's gonna give you six his minimum. Like we haven't really got that. Like there's just some players you need that, that, that are just gonna give you a base level. I don't think we have that. So yeah, I, I would. I don't think he transforms the squad, raises it up another level, any of that potential jazz, but I would. Depend, dependent on the fee. Obviously it looks like Southampton wanting to be a one club man. He did almost join Villa. So, I don't know, man. Really. 
I mean, what a picture, man. Could you imagine? Something you probably never see Arsenal. <laughs> you think you're ever going to see him in an Arsenal cap holding a Premier League title? I mean, we can hope. But myth. Silence, don't stand And the thing is, he's, as much as I criticise him, he's he's invested. Like, so I can't blame him logically if he didn't want to invest in January because we've spent a big outlay. There ain't been too much bang for our buck. We, we'll be calm. Like, Eddie's just not levels, man. Certain, there's nothing wrong with it. Certain men are just not levels. Like, look at look at Joe Willock. He's doing well for himself starting week in, week out at Newcastle. Not pulling up any trees, but yeah, man. That's what Eddie needs to do. And I don't generally don't think... I don't know if Eddie's a Premier League footballer. I think he could be part of the squad, but I think he could easily be in the Championship. And I mean, you look at Arsenal's next three games, man. Wolves, Watford, Brentford. Now, Brentford trying to, you know, Brentford beat us last game. Let's try and, you know, let's try and get involved in that. Wolves are going to want to cook us. Watford are fighting to stay in the league. So, again, we get nine points. Six to nine points. We're in a good position. You watched the final with Chelsea and Palmeiras. Just wondering how the midfielder we were linked with, Danilo, got on. Yeah, I did a watch along for it. Not ready. I think he's a, a project player. You know, obviously it's difficult against Chelsea and things. And maybe if he's in a more even team, but inconsistent passes, some better passes than him. Looks a good prospect, but inconsistent passes. Struggled really. Just very naive across the aspects. I could see maybe why we would get him, but why we wouldn't. Because I'm like, boy, if you played him and Lukonga away from home, it's a myth. You know, I mean, you wouldn't make yourself not a squad player then, isn't it? Take the step up. I don't think Wood Prowse, if it could happen, is going to say no to Arsenal, no to any of the teams doing more than Southampton. If a man was really willing to go to Aston Villa, Darwin Nunes would love it, but it seems like, I don't know, man, it's like he ain't linked with us. And I mean, we must have scouted him at some point. Maybe we're not convinced. I don't know. Still can't find anything else. Mm -mm -mm. Nothing else in relation to Arsenal people, mate. It's a slow news day, ain't it? Shout out, Rabbit Day. Where? You never see certain things. Apparently, for what it's worth, Martinelli's been playing as a number nine in training sessions at London. Coley says football underscore London. Which doesn't surprise me. You know, I've said it in the, I've said it before. He's a player that should be in the future able to play cr across four of the front five positions. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three of the front four. Apologies, not in the ten, but the left, the right, up front should be able to do it all. You know, he can't play on the right. He does a decent game against United on the right. Oh my God, he can play on the right. Same people that said Saka, Saka's a left back. No, Saka's not a left winger. I mean, Saka's not a right winger. He's on the left wing, man. All right. Now look. Don't sign Odegaard. We've got Smith Rowe. Yeah, if we get Leo, that's another baller on the wings. Just convert that, man. What do you think of Portuguese leagues? All right. It's got some gems there, isn't it? I like what's his name. I can't never say his name, but Ganalves. I think he's decent over there at Sporting. What do you think we should do with Nelson? I think he should go. I mean, I would love him to bag a place in the squad, but he probably needs to go somewhere. He's going to, you know, be for a couple of years, settle down roots, get your confidence and just develop in it because you can't keep being at half at Arsenal where you're playing the occasional cup game and then not involved um, or, or, or whatnot. Or, you know, you're going on loan to this club, that club and the other club. You need to settle down roots and stay somewhere permanently. You should tell us your team of the season so far. Very difficult off the top of my head, man. Really difficult. Now I'm putting Ramsdale and goal. I know that. Very difficult. They're probably hella names. Jota. I mean, Salah's still a top goal scorer. I'd say, I'd say Jota, Salah, Ramsdale. Bear City players, really. Uh, half the, Bernardo Silva. Um... Guy as he's there. Couple guys still. 
Love Laka, but goals are lacking. Maybe Gabby up front and Pepe is a 10, but Summer is key. Nah, 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 nah. I'm sorry, Pepe, 10, leave it out. I'm sorry. Dembele might be worth a gamble. I don't think we're going to. David would be nice and Bellingham should be our top target. I mean, I'd love that, but I don't think we're going to be bringing Jude Bellingham to the carpet anytime soon. I hope Martinelli training as a nine doesn't stop us buying a top striker. Trust me. Arsenal need to just forget about transfers and keep it simple and not drop points. Think about transfers once the season's over. Oh, 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 oh. Arteta, you just do your coaching. When you're not coaching, you and our, you and Edu just talk about you know transfers for the potential summer. Why can't we do both? Well, you know the time for us to not talk about why we don't have a striker or a centre mid is probably done because we can't fix it. But I don't I'm not sure I agree with that. Sounds good in principle. Wait, we still keeping faith in Pepe? I mean, Pepe can walk if he wants, but if he's part of the squad, we might as well use him. Heard good things about Ballard. I mean, shop window. Let's get that sold. Willock Nelson ain't good enough. Hopefully we can we can work some game like Willock. I mean, he's got a, you know, Willock put himself into the shop window. Joe Willock Nelson's not made no noise. The gaffer over there firing all this saying he needs a bit more from you. Crazy. So I don't know. Crazy. Boy, 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 it doesn't seem like there's anything else in relation to Arsenal. Boy, in this day, but that's probably a good thing for Arsenal. Six more likes until we hit 200. Top upcoming players will avoid Arsenal unless there's a lack of space in a big club. Next summer, we'll have plenty of movements. PSG, Chelsea, Man City, Man United, City and Bayern all looking so... Not hoping much. I mean, that's good, man. But there's thousands of players in the world. You, you know, if you can't get them, get players you can involve. Everyone's got to start somewhere. In January, there seemed to be this thing where most players didn't seem keen on joining us. I want top four just to show players that Arsenal is on the up again. I mean, if you, if you find players who do, if they won't find it, find players who do. I hear you. But on the other hand, I just find myself, you find players, you know, you can't go over that grade of player. Find players with the scope to be that. Liverpool, Liverpool, man, say Liverpool, Liverpool rebuilt their thing. A bit late than never, Broski. And Konku could be a shout. I would leave Patrick Shrick alone. And Konku would be a good shout, but again, going to cost a pretty penny. They know they got an asset there. Apparently, Nick Usman wants him at Bayern Munich. You know how these German clubs are helping their boys out. So, I don't know, man. Crazy. Boy. Crazy. Love for hitting the like button, people. If you hit the like button, come on. Big up you lot. Big up you lot. What do you think about Wolves moaning about Arsenal? Ah, oh, fuck off, Wolves, man. Anyone that's got a problem, get out of here. Because you lot were celebrating like that when we got sent off. You lot were celebrating like you won the league at, 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 at um, White Hart Lane. I don't give a crap, man. Cry more, man. Bring it on. You know, if you lot beat us fair and square at the Emirates, by all means, celebrate. But allow it, man. I did call the code. I didn't like that. I didn't like it. Shut up, man. What? What? Why? Footballers celebrate. You think we? Do you think Arsenal liked when Rodri was celebrating and whatnot at the Emirates? No, but they knew what it meant for the bigger context. I do think in football, people are overstating themselves, man. This ain't the first time a team's done that. Conor Cody, no one cares. Respectfully, big up Wolves. No one cares about Wolves. No one cares about you. No one was making it personal to you, lot of Wolves. We have not won in 2022. You lot made it difficult for us. We were not good enough in the game. And we got three points. If you lot could finish something you lot haven't done in this 20-odd games this season, much like us, maybe you get something out of the game. Allow it, man. Get over yourselves, man. You're screaming bare insecure, man. Allow it, man. you got Neves cap. It's not our fault. Bloody hell, we won a game. Celebrate like that when we do our thing. Pussy all use. Get the hell out of here, man. 
and it doesn't matter. It was a big game. Like, man, look at Connor Cody's talk. I'm not going to repeat Neves's, but we've seen them. We've heard them. We've obviously seen the whole thing. I know Ruben has spoken about it. They celebrated quite hard, didn't they, with our fans? It shows how big the game was to them, which we said, you lot are having a good season. All we did is big up Wolves. Yeah, it was a big game. It was big to us as well. Listen, we spoke about it all week. We prepared well. We made sure we were ready. I actually thought we played quite well in the game. If I'm being honest, we had the ball. We created things for Arsenal on the top side. We've seen the celebrations. I'll be honest with you. From our point of view, we didn't really like them. We've got two weeks to try and put things right. And we go back to the Emirates to try and put a good game on against us. Fair enough, Conor Cody, man. You know? Let me play the world's smallest violin for Ruben Neves. You soft, you pussy, or you. But fuck them. By all means, when it's us, do your thing. You know? I don't care about it. No, I don't care about none of that. Arsenal got a bag of problems. I don't care about none of that. Man said Harlan. Balogun's got... Do you see Balogun's assist the other day? I mean, over 90 minutes, he's still not really asserting himself, not really doing much, but he's learning the tricks and trades, man. DG question, how do you think Arteta wants our midfield to function? Because we haven't got ball players like City or high-intensity runners like Liverpool. I don't know. And this is my biggest problem is why I always say the two people in charge of the technical front are midfielders. It's not you've got technical eights, you ain't got sixes and high-intensity fugs in the middle. You ain't got nothing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. We still just... Jacquard at one point, deep line playmaker, box to box. Partey looks like he's settling as a six of recent, but we've taken a while to get there. Boy. I need a cup of tea, green tea as well. Lots of players who want a Champions League team to buy them aren't even Champions League quality themselves, probably, but it is what it is. Dennis from Watford is pretty underrated. Well, he's doing his thing, man. He's in my FPL team. To be fair, Connor Cody's comments, Wolves just mad that they've nothing, they've never had anything to actually celebrate. They've, yeah, we've got mid table again. Let me get you some chips with that salt, Nevers, mate. I mean, yeah, man, to be fair, Cody's comments it ain't that deep. Nevers sounds touched. I don't know why he's touched, but he's touched. I'm sure when you lot got rid, got, got a point or, or got a three points a couple of years ago at Old Trafford, you lot were ecstatic. Allow it, man. Allow it, man. You know, I know it's an Arsenal thing, but we're in a very dangerous territory. Footballers cannot celebrate winning a game. The hell, man. Cronkey in the Super Bowl, he did his thing, but it's irrelevant to me. Arsenal fans are better off thinking about Eduard or Calvert Lewin. You only get to see boys just scoring against you in derbies, lol. <laughs> Eduard, well, I think we could stay clear of that. Calvert Lewin, fair enough. Don't know if that's the right thing, but. Fair enough. Crazy. What else is there? Let's have one last type on the good old Google of what's going on with Arsenal. Appreciate you lot. Hit the like button if you haven't. Opinion on Lampard at Everton. This will be what they need. I don't know, man. I really don't know. It's, I think it's too early to see what he's going. Obviously, when you look at Lampard, larger than life personality, Everyone would want to play for him, galvanise the troops. You're seeing Van der Beek. You're seeing it will all be look different now. Um, so, yeah, man, potentially. But I just I need to see a bit more from him. Or you need to ask an Everton fan, if I'm completely honest with you. And apparently, for what it's worth, apparently Ian Wright's hit back at Ruben Nevers for his, his nonsense. I mean, we shouldn't even be giving airtime, man. Forget these guys, man. Forget these guys. That who who are you? Like, whenever as you can sign for us if you want. But Ian Wright's hit back people, and he said we did well, but we're sorry. That's that's Nevers. Where's Ian Wright? Oh, we just celebrated. I thought he would have said something. I clip bit of a clip bit of article Metro. I thought Ian Wright would have said something. And I mean, this is dead. Arsenal fans beg Cronkay to invest more money for transfers and hope trophy jinx ends after LA Rams Super Bowl triumph. Talk about making... St I mean, allegedly Cronkay said... Let me verify that this is actually Cronkay. Amazing, and I'm just really proud of this group. So happy for them. And then you talk about these players. They're unbelievable. And, and this just hung in there. 
it was a tough game. I'm just so proud of them executing like they did. Fair enough. Fair enough. Someone said Arsenal's ran like a corner shot. But hey, it is what it is. Kills me to see this, man. Right, maybe he's seeing results in it. That's their second Super Bowl final. Maybe it's a results thing. Maybe if we saw some results, if Kronke saw some results, he might box some more peas. Obviously, that's Perez being stopped from joining Real Madrid and Juventus. And yeah, we actually used to have players. You know, Henri used to say, I want to join them every week. Perez, the same. Join someone every week. Perez, Vieira, the same. DG, do you back our tech? I'll back anyone who's the Arsenal job. Backing for me doesn't mean just blindly following everything. It doesn't mean not having an opinion. It doesn't mean not criticising or praising critically. I, I see enough to back. As for a light at the end of the tunnel, it's down to Arsenal. You know, every, there's every there's, for every three reasons to be positive, there's three reasons not to. It's about results. You know, I like what we've got with the building blocks and the potential, but what you do today lines up tomorrow. So we'll have to see, man. I don't know if Arteta will be big enough, really. You know, it seems like the standards are not by Arteta, but it seems like what Arteta is judged on internally, standards are on the floor. But yeah, man, we shagged them for a well be. Stan couldn't name an Arsenal footballer 100%. Probably doesn't even recognize his own son. Do you think Borgia? Do you think the Borgia one even has a chance of happening? Why would he even want to sign? I mean, I guess it's got a slight chance, but next to little. Next time will be interesting when we face Wolves. I hope we, we beat them and celebrate in their faces. Trust, but I don't even want to do that. Like, bro, we're trying to get top four Wolves. Who are you? Like, Swing the game, keep it moving, man. Let these guys be in their feelings. Who gives a crap about these men? Respectfully. It's brazy, man. It's absolutely brazy. Just forcing the fight, the beef. This is it, man. Imagine that. Imagine if he cared as much about us, where we would be, man. What we would be. Who we'd be. But boy, we're just hoping that a larger-than-life manager or character can just overachieve, really. If not... And obviously, Spence over there at Nottingham Forest, obviously, he's being linked with Arsenal. Apparently, Jamaica are trying to get him to play for them ahead of England. So, even more brownie points than me to want to, want to see him sign for this football club. Not to be, though. I mean, William, who spoke about wanting to leave Arsenal. Again, I never like to see someone fail him, but he's still chatting on Arsenal. Not now, but what's the, you know, you haven't, he wanted to leave Arsenal for three months. He's still stinking up the place at Corinthians. The highlights came on my YouTube on my on my YouTube page the other day. So I what's going on? Allegedly, the rumors are coming back. People allegedly we're looking at Coutinho again. You know, it feels like the rumors are full circle. Some of you, I wouldn't have taken him at the time away from his ability because there's a lot of baggage. But it's nice to see what, him doing what he's doing. It could have been a good option though. Arsenal set for talks as they bid to Gazump Villa for Barcelona Loney. Arsenal are ready to beat Aston Villa to the signing of Barcelona playmaker Coutinho this summer, according to reports in Spain. The Barcelona loanee has two goals and two assists in four since moving to Villa Park on loan. He excelled with a goal and two assists, obviously, in that 3-3 versus lead. Um, according to this publication, Arsenal and West Ham are the two Premier League teams looking to hijack any potential move to Villa. Barca are thinking about retaining Coutinho after this season, while they could even attempt to sell him to a team that pays better than Villa's 33 million clause. That's assuming Coutinho would want to go. For me, Coutinho, you've not found any love. You know, I, I, Such is life. Gerard could move on or be sacked. Just like, I, you know, you, you, as a manager, your shelf life isn't that long. But you know, you've got someone that understands you. You've got a fan base that loves you. I wouldn't be in any rush to leave Villa Park, if I'm honest with you. So I don't know what to believe of this. But allegedly, Arsenal and West Ham are said to be extremely interested in purchasing Coutinho in the summer. And the two clubs will talk to Barcelona and advance processes if they want to take the player out of Steven Gerrard's hands, people. Apparently, Arteta seems to be in love with the player. His style of play and he suits his footballing philosophy while Carragher has urged Aston Villa to take him on a permanent basis, people. So, personally, I don't know what to read in, in that regards, but, if you know, I'm sure there's something according to what you want to see, people. Uh, what should we call that? Coutinho. In the summer. 
call it that super bowl that's not how you spell super bowl sorry people again you'll never find a youtuber who cares more about you lot than me because i know some of you watch this on the replay and i care about the playback experience so i like to have timestamps so that if you don't necessarily have time to watch everything you can come for exactly what you need in it pause i still would take never to arsenal man just cut your hair stop crying and let's do this gerard lampard Vieira. who finishes highest Villa for me, you know, but I need to see the table. I need to see the table. I say, I think Villa, I just think Villa are singing from the same hymn sheet. I think the only thing that for me, I don't like about Aston Villa, I think their defense, like I think respectfully, like the bars on the floor. You brought in Chambers, you've got Courtney House, your first choice center half, when fitting Konza is, is, is meaty, you know, Mings is shit. I'll be honest with you, you know. Luca Dean's car, Matty Cash is all right, but I think if everything was patterned, they're gonna need to move on from him. Uh Palace, I just I don't know for them really. But then again, they're right next to Villa. They're right next to them. That's what, what else did you say? Gerard Villa. There's what four to five points separating all of them off. I'd say something just tells me Gerard. I'd obviously through the Arsenal thing, I'd love it to be. Vieira and that, but I just think probably, I just, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question, you know. When you look at Everton's form, we know Everton's form's toilet. Four losses and one victory in the last five. Crystal Palace, two losses, three draws. They got Chelsea next. Aston Villa, one win, three, one win, two draws, two defeats. They've got Watford. I'm going to go with Stevie G. And then Palace, I don't know, man, because on one hand, I think Palace could... You never know, Everton. I, I don't know. I think Everton will move up the table. I think Everton could leapfrog, leapfrog Palace. So I'm gonna say Gerard. I'm gonna hope for my boy Vieira. Arsenal ties and that. I'm gonna say Gerard Vieira Lamps. We have had so many opportunities to sign Coutinho. Would be frustrating if we did it only when his stocks was up. Trust. Need to go for Basuma. Him and Party is top four pivot easy. Ooh, I don't know when it comes to breaking up play. Maybe, but when we need to break down a low block, I know. Basuma is definitely, I'll say Basuma is probably more progressive than Partey consistently through 90 minutes just on what I'm seeing at Brighton, but ooh, I'm not sure. Big up, Paul. Love watching you live whilst doing shit around the house. Thanks, DG. No, thanks to you and everyone locked in for taking in the thing, man. Without you, I'd be dead. South London saying Villa for him. Coutinho, we're going to try for Benzema again as well. Dabala is a good purchase. He is free. I mean, Dabala is going to have a list of options. He ain't coming here. If we win our games in hand, we're two points behind Chelsea. If we end up finishing third, would that be a good season? That would be a great, that would be a fan. If Arsenal finish third, that's a fantastic season. If Arsenal finish fourth, that's an amazing season. Both overachieving. If you finish top six, that's standard. But boy, we can dream as much as that is. And again, you said if, if we win them, you know, right now, Chelsea have played 24 times. They've got 47 points to our 39. You need not only for us to win, you need Chelsea to drop points. Of course, finishing third would be great, but let's just focus on top four, top six, man. Let's not puff out. Just obviously, I have aspirations and that. I mean, you can approach Pog, but I don't think Pog will be signing for Arsenal. They'd be solid, but we need to break down teams. It'd be a good option. Do I believe in Partey and Basuma as a pivot over across, across 38 games? Nah. You know, nah. And to be fair with you, I don't know if they will, you know. I don't I don't know. I'd prefer to see it, but I don't know if Basuma and Partey are going to be a more progressive field, midfield than Jacka in there. For not to praise him, I don't know. I don't even believe it, really. I don't have a choice. What, what is your choice of the ideal forward based on all the Arsenal rumours? Uh, I don't know. We're linked with a lot, man. I would say going back to the summer, it would have been Latoro Martinez. I do think Isaac and Borgia would be perfect fits. But then again, did they score enough goals? I do like Jonathan David. I mean, Dominic Cavalloon's all right. I'd probably say Isaac or something, really, just based on that. But I'd, I just want goals, man. It's not impossible, but let's just focus on, like, being fourth right now. Right now, we've got 22 games played. We're sixth. Get into fourth. Win your games in hand and we can talk about things. Like... <laughs> Right now, boy, talk about third, all these things from sixth place is of little help. You know, focus on getting more than one win in 2022. Focus on actually knowing how we're going to score goals because Gabriel can't save you all the time. The young G's can't save you all the time. Sometimes you might just need your striker to bag. 
So I think personally, let's just focus on on one thing first, and then what shall happen? Shall what shall be? Shall be in it. Really, that's where I'm at with that. To be fair with you, I don't even. I think I think Maguire will still get called up to England. How if Mings play? If Mings gets called up at the expense of Ben White, then Southgate, cause it's time to call it a day, man. Need to get top four SAP to get Champions League money and attract players because Newcastle is going to make it hard in a few years to get top four. Boy, top four would be great for you lot. More than great. Be absolutely amazing. Be flipping fantastic, fantastic. Or be it's, there's no words for it really. It'd be quality. But again, whether we do is another thing. Good position you found yourselves in, but boy, boy. No other Arsenal news, really. Boy, just getting top four would be good. I don't think we should change formations just because Saliba's coming. I think they should have the ability to play three at the back anyways, as we showed when we went down to 10 men um, against Wolves. But I wouldn't say change the whole structure. I want to see Pepe come off the bench as well. Where do you see Smith Rowe playing long term? Can play in all of them. Look at Grealish. He can play across, you know, Grealish can play across all of them. Personally, I see Smith Rowe as an eight and a 10 and a left winger. I see him for me, probably at home 10. I think with maturity and stuff, he could do a job as an eight. I'd say in the medium term, that creative that creative mid off the left and the 10. I think there could be an eight in, in, in him or the ability to play as an eight. I do think, you know, when you look at Kevin De Bruyne and Grealish, they're good viewpoints of what he could be, but. Yeah, you got to learn to affect the game across all of them, really. Could be. It's a good option. It's a good debate to have. It's a good conversation to have, you know. And hopefully Smith-Rowe, unfortunately, Martinelli's out. But one byproduct is Smith-Rowe, which I wish we could play 12 players. We can't. Smith-Rowe, for me, gets back in the team off that left-hand side. And it doesn't disrupt Odegaard. Because I actually like... I think there's games they don't have to play. Um, they're, you know, they don't. you don't have to play both. But I do like how they they link up together. And as an Arsenal fan, especially as a spoiled Wenger baby, that's all man was used to. Just bare people, just elite ballers, just linking up play. Like for me, of most recent, it'd probably be like going to the Emirates. Ramsey, Aaron Ramsey always used to try to get involved and it used to annoy me because you're not the guy for that. But sometimes Santi, Ozil and Alexis, them man, specifically between them three, it used to be mad. And do you know who unpopular one? He's not saying he's of these levels and whatnot. But when Welbeck, I think Alexis used to like playing with Welbeck, you know. I just remember that the Emirates, he always used to give him balls in decent areas. Welbeck will pop it off. To be honest, Welbeck off that left-hand side based at Arsenal, it wouldn't be the worst in the squad right now, really. Like, oh, man. Maybe then you could go with Martinelli up front. Welbeck just work hard on that, man. Crazy. Crazy, man. What's your prediction on where we'll finish? I don't know. Top six. Well, I don't know. We could finish as high as fourth, as low as eighth. I don't know. Arsenal's volatile, man. I don't know. What's up with Wilshere? And respectfully, I love Wilshere, but I don't care. Like, I, I really... As much as I love Wilshere and whatnot, I am... It's not that I'm getting annoyed. It's like, but how many times are we going to hear the same old story on Arsenal.com about he loves the club and all these things? Like, I, I hear it. I love it. But it's like, allow it. I love that he's training with the club. I hope he gets a club. You hear that there's a couple Serie B clubs interested, but, you know, you didn't get a club for whatever reason. All January, you didn't get a club. Don't know, man. You might have to... I don't want you to call it a day. I think it's harsh, but you might have to try to go to America or try something new or, you know, start their management thing because I think it's a thing where, obviously, people just... When they hear Wilshere, it's just injuries. He probably is fit. Obviously, he ain't played in time and stuff, but people just probably don't want to take a chance because of the injuries and all these things, which is quite sad, but it is what it is, really, isn't it? Really, it, just, it is what it is. But, yeah, man, with that, though, I can't lie. It's lunchtime, people. I'm going to go get some lunch. And then, obviously, I'm going to play Football Manager with you lot at 4.30. Again, people, make sure you're following me on Twitch and YouTube because, again, you know, 
There's hella content to come. We're going to be doing watch-alongs for the Champions League. Tomorrow is PSG Real Madrid, where I'll be doing it on YouTube. Wednesday, I'm going to do Inter Milan, Liverpool on Twitch. Thursday, will be on Twitch as well for Barcelona, Napoli. There'll be other content sandwiched in between that. Like, again, footy talks, all of it. But make sure you don't miss out on anything, people. Make sure you're setting your reminders on Twitch and YouTube. You're following me in all the socials and whatnot. Last thing, where we finish is a fitness thing for me. Any injuries to the wrong players could wreck our season. Zeke, and this is it. We're betting on a lock. Bosnian powerhouse. I like your username. I hope you're actually Bosnian. Shout the Bosnians out there. Enjoy, you know. I hope you lot enjoyed the content. Enjoy what's ever left of your day, people. I appreciate that. Most importantly, stay healthy, stay safe. I love to, you know, hope for you lots continued good health, um, you know, and your loved ones. Again, it's Monday. Let's start. It only gets easier. Let's start the week strongly. Our goals, our hopes, our dreams, our ambitions, our aspirations. Let's move even that much closer to it. You know, a wise man once said, you can't always judge life on the fruits you, you harvest, but sometimes on the seeds you plant. So if worse comes to worse, let's plant some seeds in it. Hit the like button. Check out the rest of the content. It is what it is. I'll see you lot at 4.30 and whatnot. Again, it's a pleasure to be here. Appreciate the DG Nation. Subscribe if you haven't. Peace. <laughs>